so. Hello. So, um, I've been trying to film a bookshelf tour for about two months and I haven't really found a format that I liked. So I decided I'm just gonna go through my individual collections and show them that way. Um, I'll do a bunch of different parts to this just to kind of put it all together so it's not a super long video. But I am going to start with my classics collection. I will go by edition, I guess. I'm gonna do my Arcturus ones first because I think that's probably the one I have the most of. Um, it's by far my favorite. I've been collecting them for about two years and I love them. The first one I have of this collection is Huckleberry Finn by Mark Twain. Um, all of the covers on these are very beautiful, like very nice. And then I have From Whom the Bell Tolls by Ernest Hemingway, Table of King Arthur by Henry Gilbert. The Beautiful and the Damned by F. Scott Fitzgerald. The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. Um, and I love this cover. It's very much kind of the whole vibe of the book. And then I have As I Lie Dying by William Faulkner. Silas Marner by George Eliot. David Copperfield by Charles Dickens. The Cherry Orchard by Anton Chekhov. I have The Wonderful Wizard of Oz by L. Frank Baum. I have Emma by Jane Austen. Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen, Northanger Abbey by Jane Austen, The Odyssey by Homer, I have Villette by Charlotte Bronte, I've got The Dubliners by James Joyce, I have The Woman of White, The Woman of White, The Woman in White by Wilkie Collins, then I have Hospital Sketches from the Silver War by Louisa May Alcott, De Profundis by Oscar Wilde, A Room of One's Own by Virginia Woolf, we're only halfway through. I have a lot of these books. They are my favorite. Anne of Green Gables by Lucy Maud Montgomery. Animal Farm by George Orwell. Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. I love Mary Shelley. She's my favorite. To the Lighthouse by Virginia Woolf. I've got The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. Then I have The Poetry of Charles Baudelaire. The Poetry of Williams Wordsworth. I have The Lovecraft Compendium by H.P. Lovecraft. We Have Always Lived in The Castle by Shirley Jackson, who is the author of Haunting of Hill House. Then I have The Portrait of a Lady by Henry James. The Turn of the Screw by Henry James, which if you didn't know is what Turn of the Key is based off of. It's like a retelling of this book here. Um, we're throwing books. The Man Who Would Be King and Other Stories by Rudard Kipling. We have The Phantom of the Opera by Gaston LaRue. The Moon and Sixpence by W. Somerset Maugham. And then we have The Ballad of Sad Cafes and Other Story by Carlson McCullers. Okay, and now we have our bigger ones. Um, so I have The Adventure, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll. So that's just kind of like a cover, and then that's the actual book. Um, I like this one a lot. It's kind of reminds me, like, it's a good book to get to read to like kids like if you're gonna read with your kids because it's like big the writing's big there's pictures so it's kind of captivating and it's very pretty and then i have peter pan by jim oh no jm barry uh it's kind of the same situation this is the like cover i had the secret garden also but i gave it to my sister because she wanted a copy of secret garden and I have another copy of it anyway. Then I have Napoleon, The Art of War and Power. So this one I like, it's got like a kind of shiny cover. This one also has lots of pictures. The writing's a bit smaller in this one. Then I have The Book of Five Rings. And that's kind of the same situation where it's kind of that iridescent with the gold foiling publisher we have Paradise Lost by John Milton so this one here it's a heifer um as anyone who's read Paradise Lost can say uh but I like the setup for it it makes it easier to read because it's not so much in your face um I have another copy of Paradise Lost I don't know where it is 
and it doesn't have that kind of setup and it's more like and it makes it kind of hard to read because it is a very old book with very different language so yeah those are literally like the prettiest covers I've ever seen okay so my second biggest collection that I know of would be my Canterbury classics ancient Greek philosophers so it looks like that with Apollo on the front um the artwork in this is very beautiful the art of war and other classics of eastern philosophy the love craft tales of horror this one has the uh, cthulhu arms and then i have wicked and son of a witch by gregory Maguire. this one has a map so this is a two for one les mis by victor hugo um this is an utter brick this one just has um yeah I really love the artwork on it. it makes it worth it um I've been slowly collecting these ones not really as actively as I have been the uh Arcturus because they're a bit more expensive or the Arcturus is three for your ten dollars Hans Christian Andersen's Complete Fairy Tales um same deal the art in this one's more colorful and then lastly uh, i have the divine uh comedy by Elgardi. so that's dante's inferno the artwork for that one boom these are the collector's library um i got them from a used bookstore in my hood um they look like this they're really pretty the writing's big uh, well, I wouldn't say big, it's like medium size. The inside looks like that. And all the insides look the same. Uh, the only thing I don't like about this is, um, these stickers. But I don't want to risk peeling them off and ruining the books because they're kind of old. This one is Oliver Twist by Charles Dickens. Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn by Mark Twain. And then I have The Secret Garden by... I don't remember what her first name is. One second. Frances Hodge, Hodgson Burnett. So I have The Secret Garden by Frances Hodgins, Hodgson's Burnett. The Red Badge of Courage and Other Stories by Stephen Crane. Then I have A Withering Heights by Emily Bronte. And lastly, we have Treasure Island and Kidnapped by R.L. Stevenson. Okay, so this is where it's going to get a bit wacky. Because I don't know which ones are part of a which publishing company. But we're just going to go into it. Um, right now a lot of them are in boxes because I'm trying to set up a classics uh, bookshelf that I'm going to put into my living room. Iliad and the Odyssey, uh, both by Homer, that were both translated by Robert Fagels. So this is the copy that I had to use for class. Oh, and I also have the Aeneid, which was uh, by Virgil, also, oh no, not also, this one was translated by uh, Robert Fitzgerald. This was, again, another book I had to read for class. I have, again, the Iliad by Homer, and uh, this is the Penguin Classics Black Edition. Uh, this one was published in 88, so I actually got this one before I got this one, but we needed to get um, the Robert Fagel's translation. This one is translated by E.V. Rue. And then the second one I have in the Penguins Classics is The Canterbury Tales by Geoffrey Chaucer. So this was translated by Neville Cogill. So we'll do these ones. Uh, this is my uh, copy of Much Ado About Nothing. Um, I had to get this for a love and hate class in first year. And then I have... Um, these are two Sagnet Sagnet classics. Again, all, most of my books I get at thrift shops. Um, like the vast majority I get through thrifting or secondhand shops. So this is my copy of Othello and Romeo and Juliet. I feel like I'm supposed to have more like this, but I don't know where they are. So these are my uh, Oxford World Classics version. 
This is My Crime and Punishment by Dostovsky. And then I have The Tempest. And lastly, I have Frankenstein, the original 1818 text. So now I'm not going to go by publishers because a lot of these are just kind of like leftover kibbutz or one-offs. But we're going to just go for it. So this is my other Treasure Island copy by Robert Louis Stevenson. Uh, this is an Indigo Library. Okay, and then we have Sleepy Hollow and Other Tales by Washington Irving. I like these copies. I also I have two other books like this, but my sister stole them. And every time I say I want them back, she tells me she's not gonna give them back. So it's good. This is my uh, first and original copy of F. Scott Fitzgerald's The Great Gatsby. It, uh, was stolen from my school library. Don't come for me. And then I have the super, super old copy of um, Robin Hood. It's like barely holding it together, but these, this is the cover picture. Uh, it's super like, I would say it's past yellowing at this point and is more, um, it's brown. Uh, <laughs> It was published in, uh, this copy specifically was published in 1921, so this book is almost 100 years old. Um, but yeah, it's like brown. <laughs> Good. Then I have The uh, Count of Monte Cristo by Alexandre Dumas. Another brick, but worth the read if you want to read it. The Great Short Works of Leo Tolstoy. Dracula by Bram Stoker, the original vampire story, Charles Darwin, The Origin of the Species, the Curious Case of Benjamin Button, and Other Jazz Age Story by F. Scott Fitzgerald, which is funny because I never knew that Benjamin Button was him until he got this book. Lord of the Flies by William Golding. Then I have this very beautiful copy of Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. I would love to really like pile up on these editions because they're so gorgeous. Then I have The Big Sleep by Raymond Chandler. I have Lolita by Vladimir Nabokov. Then I have The Amazing Adventures of Cavalier and Clay by Mitchell, Mitchell Michael Caban. I have Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. Great book. Withering Heights by Emily Bronte. Great book. Then I have another copy of Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. And it has one of these like bookmarks on it. I think every book should have those, honestly. Great Expectations by Charles Dickens. We're in the end zone here. Our last three we have is Moby Dick by Henry, Mav oh, sorry. Moby Dick by Herman Marvel. Um, This one's very little. The Blue Fairy Book. So this is a bunch of fairy tales. Uh, this book was published in 65. And lastly, we have my most prized possession, and that is my complete tales and poems of Edward Al Edward, Edward, you know, Edward. We have um, the complete tales and poems of Edgar Allan Poe. So this is a Barnes and Noble copy. I love it. Edgar Allan Poe was not a great dude, but real great writer. So that's it for my classics. Um, yeah. So this is one of my smaller collections. I will go by genre, I think. I think that'll be the best way to go about it. And then if you're interested in a certain genre, then you don't really have to skip through all the other genres. There were things I like debated putting in here, like uh, Lord of the Rings. Because I think that's considered a classic at this point, but I don't know. I didn't put them in, but I do have them. So I think I'm going to put that in with with like my adult fantasy and other stuff like that. Uh, let me know what you want to see next and then I can maybe film it in that order because I don't know which way I want to do it yet. So if you want to see more of me, check out my... Um, check out my social media down below. Everything that you need to know is down below. And until next time, I'll see you later.